Anywho, okay. Washington Commanders at the New England Patriots. Got to love basketball. Um, this, I mean, I'm really drawing the good games here. Like, they, you guys really locked me in on the marquee <laughs> superstar games here. The, the Washington Commanders, of course, uh, just dealt both Chase Young and Montez Sweat at the trade deadline, uh, severely dampening their, their pass rush and their defense as a whole, which may be why this line is over, this the total is over 40, 40 and a half, little juice the over, and New England minus three in this one. Uh, prop, you've got a, uh, a reception. Uh, or Alex, you have a reception prop that you, uh, you're you going to give out. I do indeed, Brinson. Yeah, I'm back in Jahan Dotson, over mm. three and a half receptions. He looked dead in the water early to start the year, really has broken out over the last two weeks. 18 targets, uh, 13 receptions, had his uh, season best game with over 100 receiving yards last week. So that's certainly uh, encouraging. Curtis Samuel, who's uh, been accounted for a large target share in that offense, is also dealing with a toe injury. He checked in and out of the lot or of the game last week against the Eagles. Hasn't practiced yet this week. Uh, either way, I do think this is a good spot for Jahan Dotson. Washington, one of the highest passing volume offenses in the NFL this season. Mm. Uh, and certainly with the defense, you know, losing key pieces, uh, I think they could potentially be trailing. And we've just seen a lot of passing from them. So love Jahan Dotson. The Patriots also are very effective at taking away the opposing team's number one wide receiver. They rank top five in DVOA against number one wide receivers. We know that role uh, is for Terry McLaurin. So I like Jahan Dotson to stay hot in this offense. The connection with Sam Howell seems to be improving as well. So going over three and a half receptions here, guys. And RJ, you got a best bet too, right? Yeah. Oh, well, that reminds I had I have I had Jahan Dotson on my fantasy team, but I had him on the bench last week, and I regretted it. So this reminds me, I got to move him up. Yeah, I have Washington. I like Washington, but you got to get the three and a half. Um, we've seen three and a halves in the market after those that trade. Um, ha- those trades happen on trade deadline day, and uh, I think getting them at plus three and a half is a great value because we're doing this line at three. Um, my best bet for this game is Washington's team total over nineteen and a half points. Um, mm-hmm. for, so first on on the line, I know Washington's D. They lost those two pass rushers, so you know downgrade them. They were they've been awful anyway. I don't know that you have to downgrade them. It's not like you know that that pass defense is all, all of a sudden going to go into the tank when they've been in the tank all year. Um, Howell though, coming off his best game, um, only got sacked once against an elite defensive line. They did some different things on the offensive line. He seems to get the ball out quicker. If they can, they can be that offense going forward, I think they're going to score a lot of points. And New England um, defense is 30th in sack rate, 30th in interception rate. I think they can go down and and score some touchdowns here in this game. Uh, New England, I don't know if they can take advantage of this Washington pass defense uh, being awful because they're 26th in yards per play. They're under 201 net yard passing yards in seven of their last eight. They don't have Kendrick Bourne. Uh, Demario Douglas, a sixth rounder, might be their number one receiver moving forward. Um, I don't think that's that's great for, for scoring a ton of points for them. This line is telling you New England's definitely the better team. I think these teams are even at best. So if you can get a plus three and a half and even get over the field, we'll love it. Um, but if not, go ahead and take this Washington team total over. They're going to score at least 20 points in this game. I have uh, two questions before we move to the next game. One, um, it's two. It's it's New England minus two and a half on the CBSSports.com Pick'em leagues. Would you would you still lean towards Washington? I think a lot of people are going to go New England because they feel it's value. My power ratings have the line at one, so I still okay. think Washington is the play there. So you think I get? To, I mean, because I, I could I could really give you the way on this one. That was and so it's sort of like you know week nine. You start to kind of think about game theory a little bit, just in terms of like can you get some leverage on the field if if nobody wants Washington because they're selling, et cetera, et cetera. So I might go Washington. And then number two, am I dreaming or did I think somebody put this in our Slack chat? But um, did Mike Florio th- lob out on the radio that like Washington might trade for Bill Belichick this off season? I saw something about that on Twitter, but I didn't. Yeah, look into it's like it. Florio's just like it's a throw. He's like, yeah, I mean, who knows? Like Josh Harris might just go and trade for Bill Belichick this offseason. He's like, what? No, no, not that crazy. Not that crazy. That you that think would, would be. You think Bill would go? I think that if this season ends as poorly as it's going for the Patriots, that Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick are going to have a talk about whether Bill Belichick is going to remain the GM. Or whether he wow. needs to bring somebody else in for player acquisition, and Bill Belichick is not going to be down with that, and that Josh Harris, who wants to make a splash in Washington, and Bill Belichick's from Annapolis, you know, like it's not like he, I think going like going back to Washington and like reviving the Washington Commanders would like be a thing he would be into. Um, I don't know, it's not that crazy. Weirder stuff is happening in the NFL. That would be a big one, though. 